When a patient's newly diagnosed with adenocarcinoma of the lung, we have multiple different treatment choices now. We want to be thinking about whether or not they have a driver mutation, and if they have a driver mutation, but particularly EGFR, ALK, ROS, or BRAF, we know that starting on a targeted agent, especially for EGFR and ALK, is absolutely the best approach for multiple trials. And so we would start them on an EGFR TKI if they have an EGFR mutation. We have choices of erlotinib, dafitinib, afatinib, or now osimertinib. There are trials looking at whether or not we could add other agents to those, like VEGF inhibitors, and we'll wait and see what those results show. If someone has an ALK translocation, then we can start with one of the ALK tyrosine kinase inhibitors, of which there are multiple approved, electinib, seritinib, crizotinib. First line in the U.S., there's a lot of use now of electinib, and that would be an excellent choice for, for patients. Those others are also quite good as well. With ROS1, a little bit more controversy, but often would start with crizotinib or seritinib. There's some data there as well. With BRAF, there's first line approval for dibrafenib and trametinib combinations, though so we'll often use that later. We'll then also be thinking about PDL1 expression, and if someone has high PDL1 expression, there's data to support using first line pembrolizumab instead of chemotherapy. But there's also data now to support using chemotherapy plus pembrolizumab. And that benefit is seen across PDL1 levels, but was more so in the highest levels. So that would be the option as well. So those are all the things that we would be thinking about and the data behind it. With the chemotherapy plus pembrolizumab, there was a clear overall survival benefit seen, as there was with pembrolizumab versus chemotherapy. With the tyrosine kinase inhibitors, it's a little bit trickier because there's not always overall survival because of such high crossover rates and such high response rates. So in trying to figure out which one to use, we have to think about the whole picture and all those various parts of information. With squamous cell carcinoma, it's a little bit less complicated. It's rare to find a driver mutation, though it can happen. So we don't look quite as much for those. With the checkpoint um, inhibitors, uh, we, we, we don't yet have clear um, data other than if they're high uh, PDL1, we can think about using checkpoint inhibitors. Um, there'll be more data looking at the combinations that should be coming out in 2018 that might be practice changing, but we don't know yet. So at this time, we're still focusing more on chemotherapy in the squamous patients.